Hello, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards. I'm a hands-on software architect and also the founder of developertoarchitect.com. In today's lesson, Lesson 60, we're going to take a look at microservices and gRPC, Google's remote procedure call. When we take a look at inter-service communication, in other words, the need for one service to talk to another, we've got a variety of options. We could make RESTful calls. Uh, we could use inter-service calls via messaging. Um, the other option is we could leverage uh, Google's remote procedure call, gRPC. Let me talk about doing that piece here. Because when we look at gRPC, Google's remote procedure call. Uh, let's say in our example here uh, that the customer demographic service on the right hand side has all the profile and demographics information about our customers, you know, name, address, um, all sorts of profile information. Well, the customer wish list contains all of the wish list items. But I need to communicate with the customer demographics because I have the customer ID, but I don't have the name of the customer. And unfortunately, every time we retrieve the wish list, correspondingly, I need the name of the customer. It's part of my contract. So I need to communicate with the demographics. Using gRPC gives us a certain advantage, everybody, because I can get up to 10 times performance increase over latency than the same kind of RESTful call. Let me show you how that works. And so gRPC leverages HTTP2 for a persist persistent connection. And sitting on top of that is the protocol buffer, or protobuf, as the IDL is communication between that. Um, that's how we get such an incredible performance gain using gRPC. So you might say, well, why wouldn't I use gRPC? Well, we start digging into how it's used, we start to see the trade-offs. Again, um, one of those underlying themes in most of my lessons about that architectural thinking. Um, thinking like an architect is always analyzing the various trade-offs associated with those benefits. A 10 times performance increase over rest in terms of latency. And so if my round-trip restful call to the demographic service is 100 milliseconds, um, gRPC can give me up to or better than 10 milliseconds round trip call. But let's um, look under the covers and see how it works. You see, because with gRPC, we have something called a gRPC server. Uh, that customer demographics, when we download gRPC, um, we would install that gRPC server as part of that customer demographics microservice. Correspondingly here, I need a gRPC stub representing that customer demographics. And herein lies the trade-off associated with that really fast performance. Because now I've further coupled these services. And so that's the trade-off, everybody. It's performance versus increased coupling of my services. But there's another trade-off, and that has to do with cost. Because you see, in normal microservices ecosystems, we don't just have one customer demographic service. No, we have several. And so the point is, since we're not going through our gateways and load balancers and stuff, now we have the question, how do I know which of the customer demographics to get to? Because everybody, this is a remote procedure call, um, similar to what we did in the old, um, or the old, <laughs> I shouldn't say that, but the EJB uh, 3.0 days, or three, EJB 3.1. And so it's with that RMI over IIOP kind of protocol. Let's see how this would work from a load balancing perspective, because actually what we need is not necessarily gRPC, but something called gRPC-LB. And so the gRPC-LB protocol is a different kind of protocol, the LB standing for load balanced. You see, what we get with gRPC is additional functionality. Well, we still have the client stub and the gRPC server, but what we also have is a gRPC LB policy sidecar that sits with our service right here. And so there's a communication between the service or that client's uh, stub and the gRPC policy server or that sidecar. And so now what happens is we still have that persistent connection, but I'm not sure as the customer wish list which one to use. Um, in most implementations, at least that I've been involved with with gRPC, um, we've used something called traffic. Now that's not Juniper 
traffic networks, but T-R-A-E-F-I-K. You see, we need some sort of load balancer, but that load balancer must be GRPC LB aware or GRP, GRPC LB compliant. Uh, traffic is one such load balancer. And so what happens is there's communication. So traffic is continually looking at all these customer demographics and finding out you know, based on various types of load balancing policies, um, maybe the most healthy, which one's next available, so on and so forth. So that when that customer wish list wants to invoke some functionality in that customer demographics through a remote procedure call, it talks to the policy server. The policy server is continually communicating also with traffic to know that the one you should go at is, in fact, the first one there. And that's exactly how the load balancing policy works. Again, the trade-off here is really associated with much more complexity, but also cost. And we also have those persistent connections kind of sitting there between those. And so really what I wanted to do in this lesson was show another third alternative for communicating between microservices, but more importantly, those trade-offs about when to use gRPC-LB and when not to. Performance versus coupling slash cost. Another place that's very common to use gRPC-LB or re Google's remote procedure call is with something called data services, where we actually front a shared data repository between microservices. Uh, a lot of times we may have a single service component or a single microservice fronting that data. That's called a data service. Because those services are so tightly bound anyway, that's a really good opportunity to leverage gRPC because not only do I don't care much about that tight binding because all the services are tightly bound, but now I increase that performance problem associated usually with those data services. Uh, for more information, you can go to the Google's Remote Procedure Call or GRPC site um, by going to grpc.io. Uh, traffic is one such load balancer that does support uh, the GRPC LB protocol. Um, so I've limited, listed it there as uh, traffic, T R A E F I K dot I O. And certainly, all of these lessons are located at Software Architecture Monday on my website, developer2architect.com slash lessons, where every other Monday you can get another lesson in software architecture. I do offer three private training classes that you can uh, bring into your company. I have a three-day software architecture fundamentals, which is a hands-on course, a one-day microservices architecture and design, and also a hands-on one-day analyzing software architecture class. Uh, some of that material is made available publicly or online. And so if you go to my upcoming events portion of my website, which I've listed here, um, you can kind of see at the next conference or public event uh, that I am teaching or training at. So this has been Software Architecture Monday, Lesson 60, Microservices and the Use of GRPC. Again, my name is Mark Richards, and stay tuned at the following Monday for another lesson in software architecture. Thank you so much for listening.